Hey everybody, welcome to Play, Rank, Share, the show where I cover the marquee PlayStation 5 titles, create an ever-evolving ranking of the best PlayStation 5 games, and share my opinions with you. My name is Tyrus, and this episode is all about Horizon Forbidden West. If you are playing Forbidden West, make sure to leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also remember to like the video as it helps other people find the show, and with that out of the way, let's jump in. Forbidden West was easily my most anticipated PS5 game for 2022. I loved Zero Dawn and even went out of my way to get the Platinum Trophy. But knowing that Guerrilla Games was going to take this already great formula and continue to iterate on and improve it had me immensely excited and I was expecting this game to feel like a Game of the Year contender. I just recently rolled credits on the game and after putting about 35 hours into it, I can confidently say this will be a hard game to top as my favorite of the year. Following the events of Zero Dawn, protagonist Aloy is now heralded as the savior of Meridian, but she quickly finds out that her quest is still not complete. To save her world from further destruction, Aloy must venture out into the Forbidden West where she encounters new machines, meets new allies, and faces grave threats. I don't want to delve into the story too much, but I do want to say I thoroughly enjoyed the journey that Aloy went on in this game and found a charming cast of supporting characters helped elevate the journey of this former outcast turned hero. This sequel brings new traversal options for our protagonists and makes it easier to explore the world. First off, Aloy is now equipped with a glider mechanic that makes it easy to avoid scaling down mountains and instead reach destinations quicker. A grapple hook is also introduced to help Aloy cross large gaps or zip up to high ledges. I thought these were both welcome additions to the formula and made traveling around the open world easier and more enjoyable. Another huge improvement to me in this sequel was the increased depth and difficulty to enemy encounters. Initially facing new machines was often a daunting task, as not knowing the enemy's patterns or what the area of the body chip away at could quickly result in death. However, after repeated encounters, I learned what parts to target, what traps to use, and the best combos to make quick work of the machines. With over 30 machine types in the game, and a fair portion of those being brand new, there was always a new challenge waiting around the corner. It felt so satisfying to have encounters go from being onerous to a breeze through numerous attempts. Despite all machines being these robot animals, they all had different weak points and different patterns of attack, making the formula never feeling stale as there's always a different machine type waiting for you in the next area. The game is also stuffed with different types of content to engage in. On top of the monster hunting and main story progression, there is a variety of mini-game-like content to add to your total playtime. This includes racing challenges, fighting pits, and a board game based on the world's machines. There are also a multitude of collectibles to find across the world to help Aloy understand what the world was like before the extinction event. One of my minor gripes about the game is that sometimes I felt like there was too much to do, and I kept getting distracted with smaller tasks that did not net me much reward in the end. It left me wondering if this game could have been finished sooner, or if the story could have been even better if some of these smaller features weren't included. But even if I did not particularly enjoy every single one of these elements, they all still helped illustrate a lively and vibrant world in the Forbidden West. The true standout piece of the presentation was the importance and attention to detail placed on the side quests. I found most of the side quests to be essential to my playthrough, and I completed many of them by the end of my journey. The topics and characters of these quests often directly tied into the main campaign, providing more depth on how the world is reacting to the events of the main story. Completing certain side quests within the game can even change minor things about the larger world. There are also plenty of references and characters appearing from the original game in these quests, which I greatly appreciated. I think it's also fair to say that Horizon Forbidden West is the best looking game on the PlayStation 5, or at least deserves to be in the conversation with games like Demon's Souls and Resident Evil Village. I was stunned by how far out across the map I could see when at a high vista point, and was enamored when I can see a tall neck from far away, all while maintaining solid frame rates in performance mode. The game also makes great use of color and uses a variety of environmental settings to show off the entire palette. From snow-capped lands to the blistering desert and beyond, the varied environmental settings helped keep the exploration from feeling samey. Finally, I was impressed with the animations in Forbidden West. Each type of machine you encounter has their own unique mannerisms and actions in battle, adding to the uniqueness of different encounters. 
The character animations also felt stellar for an open world game. Normally, graphics and animation quality can take a back seat in these more open games, but Horizon truly burst the doors down on what can be expected from this genre. Even side characters are filled with personality and facial expressions in the brief cutscenes they are featured in. While some character models you can see over and over again while exploring the world, I didn't find myself often thinking I've seen a generic character model while in the West. Setting the game in a pseudo post-apocalyptic setting does help cut down on the amount of characters you need, but I was still thoroughly impressed with the animation and art direction of this game. While I've been singing the high praises of Forbidden West so far in this video, that's not to say it doesn't come with some flaws. While these are minor, I still found them annoying to deal with during my time with the game. First off, Aloy's hair physics are straight up wonky. It is constantly swinging around all over the place, even when she is barely moving. Hair physics are hard to get right and what they made took skill, but it needs to be turned down a notch. Furthermore, there is simply too much optional dialogue in the game. To get a full understanding of a character's thoughts or a tribe's culture, you need to engage in all of these dialogue options. But piecing so many optional paths together made these character interactions very robotic and broke my immersion. Like I said before, critiques like these are not deal breakers in the grand scope of an excellent game, but nonetheless were recurring annoyances to deal with. Horizon is the closest equivalent to a tentpole blockbuster movie that we have gotten on the PS5. This is an unabashed sequel to a standout PS4 game and elevates the franchise in every way. While we haven't heard of sales data yet, the strong critical reception has likely solidified Horizon as a pillar franchise for PlayStation. With Call of the Mountain on a way for a VR entry in the franchise, I wouldn't be surprised to see a non-Aloy spin-off game coming soon, similar in scope to Uncharted Lost Legacy or Spider-Man Miles Morales, and it's just a matter of time until we hear about a Horizon TV show or movie in the works. PlayStation Studio games stand out as a benchmark of quality in the industry, and Forbidden West feels like the first standout example of this on the PS5. The bar has been set for the other PlayStation Studios, as this game has pushed the boundaries of animation and graphical fidelity in an open world game. While there are some issues I have, these are minor gripes in a game I was captivated with from start to finish. Overall, I think Horizon Forbidden West is an outstanding game, and I give it a score of 9.5 out of 10. I have put a lot of thought into where I will rank Forbidden West on my list of best PlayStation 5 games. While I have my handful of small complaints, I can't shake how beautiful this open world game looks with a captivating and fun sci-fi story built on top. Throw in some excellent gameplay with plenty of challenge when fighting those larger machines, and Horizon Forbidden West is truly a complete package. I have decided to rank Forbidden West as the number one best PlayStation 5 game. While I think the gameplay of former number one Returnal is more captivating, Forbidden West beats it in animation, scope, and story on top of being a more accessible game with its difficulty. This marks Forbidden West as the third title to ever be ranked at number one in play rank share history, with Spider-Man Miles Morales being the third. Make sure to check out the comments below to see my full ranking of PlayStation 5 games, and let me know what you think of the rankings and what games you think are missing. Thank you for watching this episode of Play, Rank, Share. More reviews for PRS are on the way, since so many games have been coming out recently and even more are on the horizon. Upcoming reviews include Dying Light 2 and Elden Ring. What are your thoughts on Horizon Forbidden West? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, don't stop sharing.